Hey, welcome back to art class with Mr. Darby. Today, we're gonna work on a wax resist drawing and painting. So, wax resist, as you know, is a wax coloring on paper, or it could be fabric, and then you'd watercolor paint over top of it. And we know that wax is not friendly with water, and so when we use the watercolor paints, it'll push the watercolor paint away wherever we've colored with crayon. We're gonna use a project we've already done. It's the Snow People project. We're going to color it with crayon all over the place. That would be even the white snow and the sky and every bit of white paper will be covered with our crayon so that it's covered with wax. We'll wrinkle it up into a ball and we'll open it up and then we'll use our colors of watercolor paint to paint right over top of all the coloring we already did. The wrinkles from wrinkling up into a ball will create cracks in the wax where the paint can get through. It'll make the paints seem darker. And that's what will give us that antique or vintage look to our project. So first things first, get a drawing. Second thing, get your black crayon. You're gonna need it to outline with. We're gonna outline it with our black crayon to make a nice bold edge, almost like a coloring book page. Then we'll start using our other colors of crayon to color in the rest of the project. See I pushed really hard on the crayon and that's part of the wax resist process. If you push lightly on the crayon it will allow the watercolor paint to soak into the paper. So we want to push nice and hard, give us a nice black outline. Remember when you're coloring with crayons it's going to be smeary and smudgy. Even get it on the end of your hand here and drag it across your paper it's going to make you sad. If you didn't cover the pencil lines perfectly, don't be worried about it. You can cover it with the crayon and eventually with the watercolor paint, they won't show up. So let's go ahead and begin coloring the rest of the project. You can see some black marks in the sky from where my yellow crayon has hit uh, the black lines around your project. You just want to be careful with that. Try not to let it happen. If it does happen, it's not that big a deal. You can use your fingernail and try and scratch some of the wax away and then color it again if you want to. But in reality, we're going to be watercolor painting over these and some of those little um, marks that you don't like right now, once we wrinkle up the paper and paint it and open it back up and paint it, I mean, uh, it's not going to be anything. We're not going to be worried about those. It'll actually add some character to it. The last step here is to color all of my white areas with white crayon. That can be really difficult to do because seeing white on white is not that easy. If you miss some spots on the white while you're coloring, don't be alarmed. It's kind of the beauty of this project. The fun of it is the magic behind revealing where the snow has been colored and where it hasn't been colored. Remember, we're putting the watercolor paint over top of it, so when we do our light blue on top of the snow, the paint will stick where there is no crayon. Wherever there is crayon, it'll be pushed away and it'll show you something really cool. But right now, our next step is to wrinkle up our paper. So don't be so in love with your project that you're not willing to sacrifice it. But also, don't wrinkle it up and ruin it to the point that when you open it, it's been ripped into a bunch of little pieces or the edges are ruined. So I got to squeeze nice and tight, squeeze it up, get those creases in it. Where the creases and wrinkles are in the paper, it actually creases and, and breaks the wax inside and it will make a really cool texture when we paint it. Yes, very nice. So. 
you can even see here where my colors have worked themselves on top of each other because of the wrinkling. Let me go get some watercolor paints and we'll watercolor this thing, see what it's gonna look like. You don't have to go over the color of crayon with the same color of paint. I, in fact, will be using orange to do my sky. And then I might do blue over top of my snow. And that can create a really cool effect. So let me get some water here. Get my orange ready to go. And as I wet my paper, my paper is going to lay flat again. Let's check it out. Let me slide this up. This, now we're ready for the final step of the project, which is to rinse it off under water. When we rinse it off under water, you'll see that some of the watercolor paint is bubbling up here. It doesn't want to soak into the paper, which is what we wanted, right? But now we have to do something with it. You could take and wipe it with a sponge or a paper towel, but when I rinse it under water, it makes it look really cool. So let me see if I can show you how that works. Okay. The final step of this project is to rinse it off and you can see already where the paint has been able to stick and where it hasn't been able to stick and um, where it hasn't stuck we should be able to rinse that off here with the water from the spigot so as I just come across here rinsing doesn't matter if the water is hot or cold just that it's running over top of the painting getting some of the excess paint off that was bubbled up. If you don't get that paint off, then you won't be able to see what was actually painted and what was just left behind. Because the watercolor paint that isn't sticking will eventually evaporate and cling to the paper and that kind of ruins it. So let's take it over here and get a good look at what it is uh, like laying flat. There you have it, our wax resist snowman painting. From beginning to end, you can draw it, trace it with black crayon, color it with different colors of crayon, and use any colors of watercolor paint to paint over it. Lastly, use your spigot to rinse off any excess paint and then lay flat and allow it to dry for a very antique or vintage looking project.